Okay, today we're covering the EGR system on the Ford 5.8 liter. Now, I'm gonna break this down Barney style, going over just the basics. This is just for the average person that needs to know how each component in the system works, how to test them so you're not playing parts changer, and just an overview of the EGR system. I'm not gonna get into all the intricacies of the different EGR systems that have evolved over the years, how they all function, things like that. Just the basics here. So we're gonna stick with the Ford 5.8 liter. Now, that being said, some of the symptoms to let you know you have an issue with your EGR system, obviously if your truck kicks a code and on the 94 and that, the pre-OBD2, you'll have to extract your codes. It's not gonna be a plug-in computer. Um, but some of your symptoms are gonna be a loss of power or hesitation on acceleration, um, especially going up hills and things like that. You could smell fuel at your exhaust pipe. You'll have a noticeable loss of fuel mileage um, and the engine would, would run a little rough. Now. To do these tests, the vehicle needs to be at operating temperature. That's important. You can't accurately test the EGR system if the vehicle's not warmed up because the EGR system isn't even activated until the truck is at operating temperature. So essentially what happens is your unburnt exhaust gases are going to be cycled back through, through a tube off the exhaust manifold, up through your EGR valve and back into the cylinders to be reburnt again. Um, people that eliminate their EGR systems on vehicles I don't recommend it. On a diesel, absolutely. It's counterintuitive on a diesel engine. But on your gas engines, they are increasing your fuel mileage. Um, I'm all for eliminating your smog equipment and your air pump and all that. I'm not a rat. Do your thing. But the EGR system, leave it be. It's helping you um, and getting you better fuel mileage. So, again, get your vehicle up to operating temperature. Uh, best thing to do is just drive down the road for a few miles. This truck is, has been off the road for a couple of years, so I just left it run in the garage for, for a while. Um, until it was nice and hot. So let's go ahead and get started. To do these different tests, all you're gonna need is a multimeter and a very basic engine vacuum gauge. So on this 5.8 liter, 94, you have three main components. You have your EGR valve, you have your EGR position sensor, and then over here, right by your uh, coil there, you have your EGR control valve. Now, how this works is around 1990 or so, it went over from being a vacuum operated EGR system to one that's controlled by the computer. So we're gonna have one vacuum line running to the EGR, whereas the older ones had a couple. That's about the only difference I'm gonna get into right now. So how this works is the computer is gonna tell the engine when to open the EGR and when it does that, it's gonna send a signal to the EGR control valve. Your white line is the vacuum. The green line is the vacuum going to the EGR valve that'll open or close it. So when that switch gets a signal from the computer, it's gonna open up and it's gonna apply vacuum to the EGR valve opening it. The sensor on top is simply letting the computer know if the EGR is opened or closed. So that's all, that, that's the basics of how this works. So to test this, we're gonna start off with this sensor on top. I'm gonna go ahead and shut the truck off. It shouldn't cool down too much on us um, while we do this. Okay, so starting off testing the sensor. Go ahead and pull out on tabs and pop that off. And you're gonna have three wires here. You're gonna have your voltage reference, your EVP, and then your signal return. We're testing for voltage across these two that are next to each other. You're gonna to wanna to turn the ignition on, but don't start the truck. Go ahead and put your voltmeter on 20 volts DC, and we should have roughly five volts or so. So there we have 3.73, so just about four volts. That's good. So next thing we're gonna do is to test, so we know we have voltage coming from the computer. Next thing we do is check the sensor itself. We're gonna be checking for resistance. And again, you'll have those three in there. And again, we're testing the two probes that are next to each other. So we're gonna put our voltmeter on 20,000 ohms, and we should be seeing roughly 5,000 ohms. Doesn't have to be exact. So we had hit five at first, we're right around 4,000 ohms. So the sensor's good. So that's all there is to testing the EGR position sensor. Okay, so now to test the EGR control valve here, 
Um, there's a lot of different ways to test this. Um, you can bench test it. You, you can hotwire it across here and you should be getting a ticking noise um, in the, within the uh, control valve. All different ways of doing this. The easiest way to do this is just to simply get the truck to operating temperature. We're going to unplug these vacuum lines. I'm going to put the gauge on the white line to make sure I have vacuum coming from the engine. Uh, make sure that line's good and all. And then I'm going to check for, I'm going to plug it back in and check for vacuum at the green line at the EGR valve. If this is at operating temperature, um, we're going to rev the engine up to about 3,500 RPM. We should be getting some sort of vacuum on the green line at the EGR valve. Not a lot, even just one inch is all we're really looking for, just some kind of movement on the gauge. Okay, truck's only been off for a few minutes, so it shouldn't have cooled down that much. Pop those lines off there, and I'm just going to put my vacuum gauge on the white line. So there you see we're at 15, coming up on 20 inches, so we have vacuum coming from the engine. So I'm going to plug that back in, and now we're going to move over to the EGR valve. Okay, so I'm going to unplug the vacuum line, go into the EGR, plug it into my vacuum gauge. Try and get the glare off for you. And now we're going to rev the engine up to about 3,500 RPM, get some good RPMs out of it. Okay, we have nothing coming to the EGR from the control valve. So that control valve is no good. So let me go ahead and replace it, and then we're gonna continue right on. Okay, so we have a new control valve installed. Now we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing again. We're gonna plug in the vacuum gauge to the line off the EGR. And again, we're not looking for a ton of pressure, even just one inch is all we need. As soon as, I, as soon as I put it on there, you saw it move, and we're at right about one inch there already, without even touching the throttle. So they saw it surge up near five inches, so that was, that was part of our problem, was a bad control valve. Now the only thing left to test it up is our EGR valve itself. Now on this factory original EGR valve, you can actually see right in there and see if it's opening or closing. Even with the truck at operating temperature and revving it up, my valve is not opening. Um, so I can go ahead and assume it's stuck closed due to carbon deposits and things like that and the valve is no good. Some people will clean them out. I say don't mess with it, just replace it. Um, you know, you can get a lifetime guarantee one for about a hundred bucks at your local auto parts store. The easiest way to bench test this is to remove it from the vehicle and then get a hand vacuum pump. Um, they're also referred to as uh, one person brake bleeding kits. They run about $25. And what you would do is on the, uh, where the vacuum hose goes in, you would apply 10 inches of pressure while blowing compressed air through the bottom of your EGR valve and that should open up that EGR valve. If it still doesn't open, then you know for sure your EGR valve is bad. I don't have one of those hand pumps. Um, I'm just gonna be replacing my EGR valve. This engine has just about 300,000 miles on it and they're all original parts. So I know this is old. So I'd like to show you that test, but again, I don't have the hand pump. So I'm just gonna explain to you how you would do it and I'm just gonna be replacing my EGR valve. But that is that sums up all the three components of your EGR system on the Ford 5.8 liter and how to test them. Replacing them is very self-explanatory, not a lot of rocket science involved there. If you had the nuts to watch this video on how to test the components, I have full faith you're capable of undoing a couple nuts and bolts and replacing them. If you do, when you replace your EGR valve, you have the tube that runs down to your manifold. If that tube breaks, they're about $40. Um, when you would go put your new tube on, make sure you use a copper-based uh, anti-seize. Anytime you're working with your exhaust components or anything gets super hot, don't use your typical um, anti-seize. Use a copper-based, and that'll keep it from uh, welding shut on you in the future. So hopefully this uh, helped you out. Thanks for watching.